From years of anxiety to warrior and mentor, Bradley Robinson created the Anxiety Project to help you end your anxiety naturally. Let's mold the new you and let's end anxiety together. Hello and welcome to episode 167 of the Anxiety Project podcast. I am your host, Brad Robinson, a CBT anxiety coach and NLP master practitioner who coaches others who are battling with anxiety, who are struggling with the chaos of their life. Everything has gotten so beyond them. They're having a hard time to grapple with all of this. And what more importantly, I'm somebody who went through extreme health anxiety that resulted in agoraphobia. I couldn't even leave my home. So throughout my 20s, I was suffering from extreme panic attacks on a daily basis. And my life reached a rock bottom that facilitated my spiritual growth in my drive to be better than I was. Now, this episode, I'm talking about minimalism. Minimalism played a big part in my anxiety recovery. Now, before I get into this episode and describe what minimalism is about, what are some of the rules that apply to minimalism and what is going on inside the brain that when you do clean up and you minimalize the material possessions in your life, why do you feel more free and more mentally stable and stronger? Really important. So before we dive into that, let's go over your comments on last week's episode, which was all about the anxiety checklist. I highly recommend that episode because you guys found it to be so useful. Tristan says, when you said, I must be certain, it instantly resonated with me. I always feel like if something pops up that is not my normal, I dive deeper into anxiety. This was an amazing episode. Thank you, Tristan, for your comment. And you can leave me comments on episodes, not only on the YouTube version of the podcast, but if you go to unpluganxiety.com, you can send me and ask me anything there. Rodnick 800 says, I swear I have all of these on my checklist. Currently, I am battling the morning anxiety and I feel the dread of the day. Your podcast has been lessening my anxiety. I will keep on listening. Well, I greatly appreciate that, Rodnick. I hope that you listen daily and keep this a part of your routine so that you can start to learn and grow out of the chaos that you're in. Tammy says, how can I get past all of these, what does that say? All of these, all of this internal chatter. Well, if you type in, Tammy, on my YouTube channel, channel the anxiety project and you type in the anxiety project and you type in let's say negative thoughts thinking or obsessing i have videos and podcast episodes talking about the internal eight-year-old chatter the little voice in your mind that we all succumb to we all pay attention to but little do we know that this eight-year-old voice is eight years old. Would you really listen to an eight-year-old child as a 30-year-old or 40-year-old or older, right? That voice is not well-trained or developed, right? That is your conscious conscience being a bumbling fool that needs to be taught lessons and reprogrammed that will help facilitate the higher you, right? You are, you are undeveloped and I am still undeveloped, 
But as I develop myself further and I discipline myself further and I and I gather new information continuously into my life, what I find is that not only do I grow in character, but my internal chatter grows and develops as well. So thank you, Tammy, for that question. Now let's get into minimalism. My experience with minimal minimalism begins around the time I was reading Eckhart Tolle. And at this time, I was working as a junior editor. I started off doing captioning for TV shows. So I'd get the TV show. I would work in this cubicle-like environment. I'd get the TV show onto the computer. Very low-quality, grainy footage because it had to be in order to upload it to this computer. Uh, and then I would add the captions to the video and that would be my day, adding the dialogue, matching up the words to the voices. And the job became mundane quite quickly. So I started to pick up Eckhart Tolle and read because I had this deep longing for spirituality, for meaning, this meaning that was missing from my life. And at the time, I was in a relationship that was nothing but emotional distress. I was working this job that quickly became boring and repetitive. And all of my impulsive habits were resulting in more anxiety and emptiness. I also had, and I still do, a strong attraction to true story movies. Movies that are based off of real life experiences of people who overcome extreme challenges. I saw the movie Into the Wild with Emile Hirsch, directed by Sean Penn. This movie came out, I think, in 2008 or around that time, maybe 2007, but at the time, I was really young, and I saw this movie, and it struck me so deeply, spiritually, emotionally. I didn't know what it, what about this movie struck me so deeply, but I cried, and I, I remember sitting on my bed after watching the movie with my parents, and I was like completely overwhelmed by this story about how this kid burned his money after leaving university. He cut up his ID and his credit cards. He put on a backpack and he hitched hiked across America. He he then went to Alaska to live off the land because he wanted to live a minimalist but also very strict, independent, adventurous lifestyle because he was lacking that meaning. So because I was lacking that meaning, that's I believe that's why I was attracted to these stories. I wanted to go on that great adventure. I wanted to live an extraordinary life and to experience the beauty and wonder of the world. And I, then I got into Jack Kerouac, who's a writer who writes a, who wrote a book called On the Road, which really resonated with me about same idea, somebody backpacking across the country, going on all these great adventures. And it was I was gripped by these people who break free from that grip of society and march. And, and these people, they march to the beat of their own drummer, right? They're very independent, people that break free of themselves and step outside of what's comfortable. Because I didn't have that independence and, and I was feeling trapped in a cycle. Something inside of me wanted to connect with something 
that was outside of my comfort zone. And then I came across a documentary when I was working this editing job called Minimalism. Now, the more in this documentary, the more these people let go of mental and and, and material possessions, the better their mental health became. And so the documentary features these two guys, Joshua Fields Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus. And these guys explore minimalism. And but more importantly, they are practitioners of minimalism. They started to practice minimalism. They started to see the benefits of it. And then they made a documentary because they wanted to get that message out there that there's more to life than gaining status, owning that expensive car, owning that mansion filled with all of these electronics and gadgets and things, furniture that may make you feel whole in the moment, but in the long run doesn't make you truly fulfilled. And it truly doesn't add that meaning into your life. You may think it does, but it doesn't. And when I saw this documentary, I saw in the documentary, these people, they looked more free. In their eyes, they looked happier. And that connected with me. Now, why does reducing clutter improve stress and anxiety? And what is going on internally? Well, when we are moving from point A to point B, and an obstacle presents themselves, we immediately experience negative emotion. Something is obstructing my goal-directed behavior. A messy room immediately generates that negative emotion. There's too much information in this room. The brain has to use up more energy to process all of this content. You may have to kick things out of the way. Search through drawers to find clothes. You notice a stack of papers that you know needs organizing. And so that adds more to the stress. You know you're not attending to those things and you're just sweeping them under the rug. The thing is, you could be feeling stress every day and you no longer know that you are stressed because that is your normal. You've been stressed for a long time. But what if you begin to clear up that clutter to see if the stress improves in some way? Feeling is understanding. The state of your home is a direct reflection of the state of your mind. Now, here are some rules that I learned from these minimalists, Ryan Nicodemus and uh, Joshua Fields Milburn, that really resonated with me, that will help you in your journey with minimalism. Number one, is the item essential, non-essential, or junk? Essential items would be a roof over your head, food in the fridge, water, Non-essential items, you could live without a couch. You could live without a TV. You could live without that coffee maker. You could live without that chair, that desk. You could. But we choose to have these things, which is perfectly fine. When you, you know, um, It's not about living in an empty square room, right? 
Or is the item junk? And that's where most of our things fall into play. And that's where minimalism lies. It's in the junk pile. But it's really, how do you determine whether it's junk? Well, their second rule is pick a possession and then ask yourself, have you used this in the last 90 days? If you haven't, will you use it in the next 90 days? If not, it's okay to let this thing go. Start your journey by picking one area of your room. If it's your closet, start with the floor of the closet. All that stuff that's lying there, piled up, backpacks filled of stuff. Take out everything and lay it out on your bed. Then ask yourself the 90-day question to each item. Sometimes you don't even have to ask yourself that question. You'll just know, okay, this is junk, this is junk, and you'll then make a separate pile somewhere else of just junk, the things you're going to donate and then things that you're going to just throw in the garbage. And then, you know, ask yourself, what can you do without? And then work your way up to your wardrobe. So do this one day, or it may take you two days or three days to just do that one little bit, that floor. But then work your way up to your clothes. And for me, this was the hardest part because... I don't know about you, but I was emotionally attached and still am to some degree to my clothing. But I would pick out something from my closet, a shirt, and then I would look at it and I would think, I haven't worn this in a year, two years. But I picture myself in it and it it feels like the same emotions would come up when I first bought the shirt. It's like the reemergence of those same feelings come up. And then I put it back, I will place it back into my closet. And then it'll stay there for another year. But it's those emotions that keep us holding on to those possessions, right? So when we actually feel those emotions and then get rid of and donate that item, You're freeing yourself of these emotional attachments, but also you're making your mind stronger. You are breaking up patterns that have been built up for a long period of time in your life. And that's really interesting. And so when I would clean out my wardrobe, I noticed that I would feel better about myself that I've done something useful today and that there's less in my room now than when I started. And the the accomplishment of cleaning up that space, it may facilitate and drive you to clean up and organize much more of your house in the future, right? You feel good. There's less information to pay attention to. Everything is more orderly in your room. It motivates you and drives you to continue this minimalism journey. But you have to start in the first place in order to experience those feelings. But it all starts with that one area. So pick that area. So many of us believe that those things add value to our lives without realizing that when we let them go, we value the space and the lighter feelings that follow even more. When you practice minimalism, you are learning how to break those strong emotional bonds Just because you feel that attraction to an item doesn't mean that you should have it. And that applies to going to the store, especially when you're at the mall. You see the mannequin, you see the model in the window. They look so good 
in that item and you picture yourself in that item, maybe you'll look as good as they will. And so there's an emotional component happening there. But when you start to break these emotional components and ties at home with when you start to donate things that you've accumulated, you strengthen your impulsive not I don't think you you I would say weaken your impulsive tendencies. You're less likely to be impulsive at the mall because you've already practiced letting go of these items and emotional attachments at your house. And I hope that makes sense. And so you won't be as impulsive at the mall or at the grocery store. So you're practicing a discipline, right? Discipline is very important. You are not dependent on things to make you fulfilled and bring meaning. But it's the letting go and independence that is truly powerful. That you have everything you need within your own self. You have everything that you need within your own self. This is a battle between you and your own mind. And that's where I'm going to leave you on today's podcast episode. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Please leave a like and subscribe if you are watching on YouTube. If you are not, I recommend that you go to unpluganxiety.com. Check out my anxiety recovery program. It'll help you add more order into your life and structure and discipline as well. But also ask me questions there. You can do that if you go to the contact page. You can ask me anything. You can suggest ideas for future videos or podcast episodes. and Or you can just share me your story and I'll keep it private between myself and you. Lastly, do not let anxiety define who you are. I will see you on the next podcast episode. Bye for now. Brad's Powerful Anxiety Recovery Program is now available at unpluganxiety.com. The Anxiety Project Program is downloadable and puts the power of anxiety recovery in your own hands. Visit unpluganxiety.com for more details. Recovery starts now.